Hello, I'm Alexandria. I'm currently 20 years old and I'm a sugar baby. It's the best life I could have asked for and I'm thankful to my mom for it. When I was younger, it was just my mother and I. Since she was a single mom, we were very poor and lived in a sketchy neighborhood. I never really felt safe in. She always told me the same things day in and day out, and it was the main three rules to live by regarding men in our lives. One, men were to support and take care of their women, unlike my father who walked out on us both when I was two. Two, don't get pregnant at a young age, like she did. Three, find a man whom your mother will approve. With that being said, I learned from a very young age how to play up to what men wanted a girl to be. I had to entice and tempt them in order to get what I want. So once I turned 18, I did my best to get in shape. I built an hourglass body at a gym, and I learned how to do my makeup in a salacious way in order to attract the type of man I wanted, a wealthy one. Then one day, after years of prepping myself to find an eligible suitor, I met the most wonderful, kind, and wealthiest man I could have ever imagined at a coffee shop. His name was Elijah. He was the son of a rich tech guru. So when his father died, he inherited not only the company, but the money that accompanied it. I didn't go into our relationship knowing this. It was quite the opposite, actually. He was wearing a t-shirt and jeans at the coffee shop that day, which I actually found to be very cute. He came off so humble when asking me out, I would have never guessed his bank account had so many zeros. After we'd been dating for a while, he admitted to me how much money his company made, and I felt ecstatic when he asked me, Alexandria, would you let me spoil you for the rest of our lives? Then instead of pulling out a ring, it was a contract, a sugar baby contract. Now, I never knew what a relationship like this could have entailed, but it was so different than anyone's preconceived notions. My relationship with Elijah is consensual, monogamous, and we both mutually benefit from it. He showers me with love, attention, as well as supports me financially. At this point, Elijah and I had been dating for months once we signed the contract. I'd followed rules one and two that my mother instilled in me. Rule three was still up in the air. Elijah had to pass the test of meeting my mother. So one day I told him about these rules so that we could set up a day for him to meet my mother. Baby, he scoffed, beginning to laugh a little and then proceeded to say, I would love to meet your mom and complete all three of those rules. He then kissed me so softly and I felt so warm and tingly inside. Later that evening, I called to schedule a time for dinner with her and Elijah. She, without hesitation, accepted the invitation and we went to see her in my childhood home, in the same impoverished neighborhood. Elijah made himself out to be a saving grace to my mother and he even offered to let her move in with us when we got a place together. She couldn't have loved him more. He treated me well in all avenues of our relationship. What more could I ask for in a man? The answer was absolutely nothing. Elijah was perfect, and without my mom's rules, I would have never been able to attract a man of his stature. I finally felt complete and safe for once in my life. What's your story? True Tales wants to hear it. If you also have any such moment, you can share it in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you liked my story. Subscribe to this channel to watch more such videos and press the bell icon for more updates. I'm Lily, and when I was 18, a rich guy tried buying my love. I've always been a beautiful girl with long curly hair that is the perfect shade of reddish brown. Additionally, a curvy body and a pearly white smile. Even though I consider myself attractive, I never knew I would get this kind of attention from a man. I had no idea the stranger I was about to meet would shower me with attention and love. I went to the grocery store one day after work. I had changed out of my corporate formal wear into something more casual. Jeans that hugged my hips and a t-shirt that molded around my bosom just right. Once I picked a few items, I realized there was a man that had been following me around the store for quite some time. He wasn't conventionally attractive but he had certain qualities one would adore, such as broad shoulders, very tall with tan skin, and dark brown eyes. I began making my way to the register, and once it was my turn to pay, I heard a voice from behind me go, I've got that. He smiled gently at me as he proceeded to insert his platinum card into the machine. I've never seen a card like that before. 
At the bottom, it said, Honored Member. I began to ponder why he was paying for my groceries. You didn't have to do that, I muttered to him, trying to stay calm because now I was about to start loading my groceries into the trunk of my old and little car. He had parked right next to me in his Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. I stood there gobsmacked as my mouth hung open in awe and wonder at it. Who was this mystery man? I decided to ask him precisely. Who are you and why did you pay for my groceries? In a very snappy tone. He looked at me desperately, as if I never noticed him before he put the card into the machine five minutes prior. He relented, admitting, I've been watching you for weeks now. Your pattern, where you work, where you live, everything. I know it sounds crazy, but I've fallen for you by just being an onlooker, and I want to give you the life I know a girl like you deserves. If you give me a chance, let me buy your love. Dinner on Friday can be a start. He looked at me tenderly and more confident now. What did I have to lose? I contemplated. Dinner with a wealthy man, even though he seemed a bit obsessive. I caved. Sure, why not? Friday sounds like a plan. What time and where? I asked now, trying to take rein of the situation. I'll handle all of that, don't you worry. Just look pretty by 8 p.m., he said as he strutted to the other side of the G-Wagon to hop in. Wait, I never even got your name, I partly yelled. In the G-Wagon that revved up, he rolled down the windows with sunglasses on at night. Nonetheless, he lowered them a little, just enough to gaze at me. I'm the CEO of the firm in which you work for. Now I knew why he had that information about me. But I didn't let it stop me from allowing his advances. The date went wonderfully, and he continues to shower me with the love and attention I always wanted from a man. Now, four years later, we are happily married and our love story will continue, and we still shop at that same little grocery store together every weekend. What's your story? True Tales wants to hear it. If you also have any such moment, you can share it in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you liked my story. Subscribe to this channel to watch more such videos and press the bell icon for more updates. My husband had collected antiques for years. He loved antique advertising signs the most. A Coca-Cola porcelain advertising sign might sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And he had over a hundred nailed to the walls from floor to ceiling in his man cave. Packages of antique signs suddenly started arriving at our house nearly every day. I asked him over and over again, where is the money coming from for these? How on earth are you affording all of these? He told me things like, oh, I sold some off, or I won this on a raffle. I knew it didn't sound right. We began refinancing our home. The lender asked that we provide copies of the statements of all of our credit cards. I did, but then the lender came back and asked for the credit card statement of a card that was just in my husband's name. A card I'd forgotten about because he'd gotten it years before. I need the statement for your credit card, I told him. That's my credit card, he said. I know they needed to finish refinancing our home. I don't have time to bother with getting it. Why are you always bothering me when I'm busy? I'm trying to get this done by next week. Can you tell me where I can go online so I can just get it to send to them? Leave me alone, he texted. I'm busy. Later when he was watching TV, so I asked again. Can I get the credit card statement? I'm relaxing. Why can't you ever leave me alone? Sorry, I said. He couldn't hide forever, though. When the credit card statement was finally in my hands, he had run up $5,000 in two months on his gleaming antique porcelain signs. I also noticed one strange credit debit. His card was debited $19.51 from his place of employment, but credited $1,951. It looked fishy. Are you stealing from your job? No, it's just a reimbursement. They just messed it up the first time. 
He got reimbursements from his job regularly, but something about this didn't seem right. A friend of mine suggested I look more deeply into the money. She handed me a rip of paper with a divorce attorney's name and number on it. I didn't think I would use it, but I put it in my jacket pocket anyway. I went through all of our accounts and through every purchase he had made. I started to notice more strange credits and debits to and from his place of work, like negative $26 and then positive $2,600 the same day. There were several of them. I texted him, you're going to have to explain some of these charges to and from your job to me. They look illegal. It is exactly what you think it is, he told me. That you're stealing money, I responded. I held my breath. Yes, he responded. I did. I set my phone down and realized my hand was shaking. My whole body was shaking. I walked to where my jacket was hung. I removed the piece of paper with the divorce attorney's name and number on it, and I called. What's your story? True Tales wants to hear it. If you also have any such moment, you can share it in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you liked my story. Subscribe to this channel to watch more such videos and press the bell icon for more updates. Hi, I'm Aubin, and today I will share a story of how I caught my wife cheating. I travel once or twice a month, and the trips can last from one to three days. So I'm out of the house one or two nights. I started to have a suspicion that something was going on because every time I would come back from a trip, the sheets would be changed on our bed. I asked her about it, but all she said was, I know you like having clean sheets when you get home. I decided to set up cameras around the house. You're just being paranoid, she told me. This neighborhood has never had a break-in. I didn't see anything, so I decided to put a tracker in her car too, so I'd be able to see where she went and where the car was located. While I was out of town, I saw one night that she spent the night at a hotel. When I got home, I plotted how to catch her. I told her I was going out of town a few days later, but I was actually staying to spy on her. As soon as I left, she got into her car and drove back to that same hotel. I drove there and waited, and eventually saw her and Loverboy come out of the hotel, kiss and part ways. I planned on confronting them at the hotel the very next round. When they exited and did their usual parting kiss, another woman that I found out later was the other guy's wife, burst from between the cars in a sprint, carrying a tire iron. Neither of them saw it coming. She whacked her husband first, and my wife next. Hit them both several times, dropped the tire iron and left. Both were motionless but still breathing. Trying to decide what to do, two security people ran from the hotel to check on them, one of them calling for help. I watched the whole thing unfold with paramedics whisking them both away. Someone from the hospital called me and told me where she was. I went there and found her room, and stayed with her for the rest of the day. She finally awoke and told me what happened, everything about the affair and the attack, and I told her I'd be filing for divorce. Her lover's wife was convicted and is serving 10 years for multiple aggravated assaults. What's your story? True Tales wants to hear it. If you also have any such moment, you can share it in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like my story. Subscribe to this channel to watch more such videos and press the bell icon for more updates.